right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Head Crack Hip Hop Spot and the Ricky Smiley Morning Show, man. You heard his record all over the radio. Yeah. You got a big tune out right now with Meek Mill as well. Man, rap a little, sing a little, do a little bit of this <laughs> and that. One time for Tory Lane. Right. Hey. Right, man, thank you so much. Woo, woo, woo. Now, for those who don't know the the history of Tory Lanez, because yeah. a lot of people might, their first discovery of you might be over the uh, the Say It record. Of course. Right. What's, what, what's the story? We like Toronto, um, right? Yeah, I'm from Toronto, Canada, uh, first and foremost. Um, 23 years old, and basically, um, I, I've been putting out a lot of mixtapes and a lot of work previous before this. A lot of a lot of it was single handed, you know, work and just me going out with my own grind and my own faith. Um, but you know, a lot of people know me either from this, you know, new single or they know me from that, right. you know. Um, and I think there's like a diversified group of two, you know, of people who either know me from this or know me from that. And the crazy thing about Toronto, like, Toronto's always had dope people. Like, you know, of course. most yeah. like, you know, revisionist history will have you think Toronto started popping when Drake put out, you know, his first EP. But I nah, mean, going back to like Charles Claire, yeah, you gotta go back Fischl. to like the you know, back in the days. You gotta you gotta get everybody in there. Yeah. You know. That's so, that's like saying New York is only famous for fifty cent. Right. Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so what do you feel like personally was the turning point to really like put the light and the energy on y'all city that y'all really needed? Um you know, it took two of us. You know? Uh and, and that being said, being being that I feel like, you know, just musically, there's really there's really nobody I don't think is really competing with the sound of Toronto. But the reason why we could even say the sound of Toronto is because there's more than one artist that bring in this brand new wave of music. And nobody sound the same. Right. Yeah. You know, and it's that's the, that's the great thing about it because you got to look at it like this. Toronto is the uh, the melting pot of culture. It's so many different cultures and peoples that, you know, black people, Asian people, Spanish people that are all getting together and they having kids and the culture is different. So the music that we grow up listening to is different. Everything is different. So when it comes out, you know. And I mean, and Brat travels a lot too, and, I, and I, mm -hmm. I think you could probably attest to this. There's something going on in Canada to the point where there's so many khaki colored people that are walking around <laughs> looking perfect, You're so like, stupid. You know, like, right. like you know, like the race of nobody <laughs> caring. And you having like you know Jamaican, Asian, Afghanistan, mm -hmm. and right. Afghanistan yeah. kids, like, <laughs> nah, and, the, and the way the coast is set up because like, yeah. the East Coast is a little bit more French, right? It's well, where I'm from uh, is Ontario, and then like there's Quebec. Quebec is mm -hmm. like the more French side. Yeah. Um, and then Ontario is like the more English side. Like, so for for a lot of the people move to um, you know, Toronto and like Ontario and those places like that, and that's when you'll see Jamaicans and you'll see all the people from the Arab Emirates and all of these people, and that's you know, kind of where I feel like it all kind of migrates there. Word. So Tory Lanez is in the studio right now. Everybody has a journey. Like, what was your first rap name before you landed on Tory Lanez? <laughs> um, damn. I think my first rap name was Reminisce. What made you switch it up? I I had like ten rap names. Like I switched. It was like Young G. At one yeah, point. that happens. Everybody has a Young at one point <laughs> yeah. somehow somewhere. But that is actually crazy. The way I got this name was actually from a uh, a janitor that lived out here when I lived out here. So I lived out here for like one year when I was mm -hmm. like 14. In Alpharetta, right? Yeah. Okay. And um, basically, he gave all of the kids like nicknames in the neighborhood, and he called me Lanes because I was always running through the traffic and doing stuff like that. Then about like a year or two later, I wanted to really make music. Uh, I wanted people to call me Notorious, like Notorious B.I.G. Right. But you know, the kids on my block, they was like, you're not going to call you Notorious. <laughs> so they called me Tory from Notorious, and I took the Tory in the Lanes. I just put them together. Wow. That's kind of a dope merge, man. Yeah, so yeah. my name really technically means Notorious Lane. Notorious yeah. Lane. It, it seemed like you could use both of them. Or Victorious. <laughs> yeah, Victorious you know? Lane. Hey, hey, however it work out. <laughs> what we want to know is where's this janitor? I, I want to know the same thing. He, we, we, we stayed in a uh, community called Belmont. And I don't know if he still works there, but it was a while ago. I'm 23 now. So this is like, what, 10 years ago? Yeah, pretty much. 10 or 9. Was he old at the time? He was about, he was probably about 50 something. Like so late pretty, 50s, late 50s. Was he like in shape? Was he healthy? Yeah, he was like one of those guys that like. He might still like, be around. You know those guys, he was, he was still a maintenance man, so he had to be up and about. 
Okay, so he probably doesn't have diabetes. His chances are high. He's pretty high. We gotta find this guy on Facebook. Nah, I I really want to find him. His name's Akeem. I don't know his last name. So if y'all know a janitor by the name of Akeem, who who used to like you know like you know give the kids cool little names back in Alpharetta, in Georgia, Alpharetta. there's probably seven Akeems in Alpharetta, Georgia. Hey, so I think it, we can narrow this down. I think somebody could find him if we really try. I think someone could find him. Maybe you could bring him on the road with you, man, and he can like fix. I don't the know about that. Uh, yeah, you, you pushing it, crack. I went to this cafe school and it was like this teacher named Sister Ann Regis. Like you ever mm. watched Star Wars? I've never. It was crazy. I was never. I never. To watch the series. I'm running into more and more people where that's their like their least. Yeah, like, like there's I a guy never... by the name of the Emperor in Star Wars. Mm. She looked just like the Emperor, but this is like in 1990. She's an old lady. So in my head, like she probably died the day we graduated. But come to find out, she just recently died. And like I, I found her Ooh. before she died, not knowing that she was sick. Mm. And I was gonna go out there and go see her. And then she like died the week I was planning wow. to go see her. So all that to say, like you know, the people that impact your lives, you, you gotta try go to reach see out nah, to nah, them nah, and just like that's understandable. at least be like, thanks for the alley you. Nah, I always, not. I always wanted to tell him because I always wondered, it, you know, if if he knows or you know, or just anybody, the people, you know, who who. who who just happen to contribute at some random time of your life if they know, you know, what you become. And, of course, it's just like like you said, you know, I would love to go back and find these people and talk to them. Word. Now, um, you've been been in a lab heavy. I mean, like, tons of EPs, mixtapes under yeah. your belt. Now it's album time. Yeah. And, like, the attention is on you. The mm -hmm. records say it is number one mm -hmm. at, at the time that we're doing this interview. How did it feel, like, after all that, like, you know, hard work and paying dues um, to honestly, finally I get that? I owe everything to God, you know. I'm uh, all glory be to God. You know, I'm not one of those dudes that's caught up in myself. You know, the record went number one in the country. I expected it to go number one because I believe and I have faith in God. And you know, for me, this is the first of many. Um, and you know, at the point that I'm at in my career, I think this is that was just God showing me like, okay, now I'm putting you on this path, and you know, I want you to go about your way from this point on um and you know i just I, I feel i feel i feel regular you know i don't right. feel like any different or i didn't wake up that morning when it went number one like <sighs> <laughs> you know, you know what I'm saying? i would imagine the people that have never experienced what it's like to have a number one record you know what i'm saying like you know everybody probably feel like man they're going to deliver a bag of money that actually has the dollar signs on written on the bag <laughs> to my house i'm a good foot taller the next day like there's so many people listening to this interview that i'll never my, know what that feels like i think i think the thing is for me is like i'm not the artist that wrote a record that was a number one and then it just popped i'm the artist that had to write 100 number one records before i got recognized right so it's like i feel like these records I've been making records that had right. potential to go number one. This doesn't surprise me. God gave me this talent, and I know what I'm capable of. Right, you just didn't have the platform. I didn't yet. have the, you know, I didn't have the yeah, platform. Yeah. Literally, say it is the first. That was the first studio session that Interscope set up for me. The first day I came out with say it. Yeah. Say it was made at the end of. 2014 mm. like I, I did that a while ago and they just now catching up you so know you what got I'm a saying? lot more already get up ready so to much go. more oh, you know what I'm but, but does it get frustrated for like the joints that you had in the past that you know are great that maybe enough people didn't hear it he could still he could bring I mean, them back he yeah, could bring I mean, them back yeah like you know? it's, yeah, yeah they still course. fresh like, to everybody else mm -hmm. and for me it's like you know sometimes sometimes I think that those those hardships and those like this didn't pop and I thought that this was gonna pop, those feelings and that feeling of like, damn, it didn't work, make me or made me have to go back and make better songs. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Cause mm -hmm. it was like if this doesn't catch, then this has to catch. And right. If this doesn't and I learned so much, you know, as as far as just taste wise, you know, and learning what what is uh it's like cooking, you know. Mm -hmm. You you put so much spice in there and you learn like, okay, this is gonna burn my mouth if I put too much of this. Until eventually you get the sauce right. That's right. You know? It's all about the recipe. It's all about the recipe. So tell me about this album coming out. Tell me the name of it, what what you got cooking and all that. I'm nah, very definitely. excited. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I don't have a name for it just yet. Okay. Um, I'm in the creative process of making the music. Mm -hmm. But I, I will say that I'm probably 99.1% certain 
that this music is probably the most timeless music that I think is going to come out of this generation. Oh, wow. That's pretty big. And and, because the crazy thing about, like, I mean, (laughs) I I hate that we just keep focusing on Say It. I don't really listen to a a lot of Mm R&B, but it's something about them songs, man. Like, you know, the the, (laughs) the way that song sounds. So catchy, yeah. Make you want to clutch your fist and hit them high notes. (laughs) (laughs) Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, like, you you make R&B that dudes can ride to. And it's such a fine balance to do that. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Because, like, a lot of times with R&B, you got to be in the car with your girl to really. Yeah, but see, that's the the thing. That's the thing. For me, I don't make R&B that's, you know, there's there there you know there's R and B and then there's just there's lifestyle music. I just happen to be a dude who sing. You feel me? I'm not an R and B singer. Right. You know, I just happen to be a dude who sings. So that that being said, I speak exactly like a dude who can sing, not an R and B singer. You know, an R and B singer is gonna say every single thing that a girl wants to hear. I'm not going to sing everything that a girl wants to hear. I'm going to tell her exactly how I am, how roughneck of a person I am, but she's going to love it because my voice is smooth. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Rico that's the reality smiling. of it, but that's why it feels okay <laughs> for you to still listen to the record alone. Right. Because the song, when you really listen to it or or when you listen to the records, they're not, they don't drown and drown you in it ain't love. Corny. It drowns yeah, you yeah. in yeah. And like, oh, this is kind of tight, yeah. you know? And make and so, you feel you know? sappy. Even yeah. the way, like, you carry yourself, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, like, it seems like you got a lot of street to you. Like, you know, like, if there was some static popping off in the club and it's like, you know, Trey <laughs> Song's Nelly and you, I think I'm going to give the knife to you. And, <laughs> and we're going to lean on some niggas, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, you know, like, I'm rocking with you. And shout out to that record you got with Meek Mill's Lord Knows. Thank you. Um, I know the the Oscar nominations just came out. Was that in the fall for the for the nomination as well? Uh, yeah, I I, I just found that that out like two days ago. Congratulations though. on that. Yeah, 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 man. That's a, that's a strong <laughs> record, man. Like it's it's incredible. It's crazy to be a thousand with you. I was I was going to throw that record away. Really? Cause I it it was originally my record. Um, I did the hook for it, and it sounded like another record that I had, and I was like, I. This might sound like I just did the same thing twice. Right. Or I tried to, you know, attempt to do this again. But then I was like, you know, maybe this would sound better with Meek's project. And I remember at the time, the the song that I felt like the song referred to, he loved that song. It was called Godfather. And um, I never was able to really give him that one. So I felt like, yo, I owed him one of those kind of songs. And it just mm-hmm. felt right to give him. And then... And then it everything went. happened. And I think that record really started popping again for him at a good time. Cause like, yeah. you know, like, you know, the, the internet in this business is weird. Once they decide <laughs> that somebody won, someone lost, it's tough for them. But this record is really like, you know, pumping them back up. And it's good to see that. Uh-huh. Cause like we're real quick to crumble people up and throw them away. People forgot this the same brother that gave you a man, a uh, house party and a whole me bunch personally, of situations. Me personally, you know, I look at situations and I look at everything like, you know, things had a time. You know, people feel one way about something one day, and you know the attention span is really short. Very short. You know, very fickle. Um, yeah. It's very yeah. You know, it's very it's very small these days. And for me, you know, I think both of the artists are talented, but like, you know, let's not forget, you know, Meek is the same person that gave us that intro mm-hmm. that made us all feel the way we felt. And I feel like personally, regardless of anything going on, I just feel like he's such a talented artist. That no matter what, he gonna put out some new music, it's gonna be fire, and we all gonna love him again. Because at the end of the day, one thing that Meek has is the streets. Indeed. And at the end of the day, no matter what's going on, as long as uh, you know, a street person or anybody from that life doesn't violate in a street way, you don't have a real reason to not listen to them. Yeah. But to some people, he did violate because he didn't respond to Drake. Like people, people felt like. Well, I'm not talking. I'm not. I'm not going into today, today, uh, okay. today situation. My thing is, my thing is, I'm just talking about as far as like in the streets. Is certain things that you just don't do. Right. There's yeah. certain things you get xed off the list for. Right. You know, and there's there's those things weren't crossed within their feud. You know, on on a personal level, from what I've seen and from what everybody else has seen. Um. But, you know, as far as whatever they have between them, 
you know, that's for the world to decide. I don't take no sides. I'm on nobody's side because for me personally, it doesn't got nothing to do with me. It don't bring me no money. Oh, the there music. you go. You know? <laughs> cool, man. So right. I know actual release date on the album yet, but we are checking for that. It'll be next year for sure. Cool. He's so you'll a- be an all-star in Toronto. Yeah. yeah. What are you going to do, perform? You got shows? Or uh, what's up? Nah, uh, I believe uh, me and, and the label are going to throw an event out there. Oh, that's what's um, up. Yeah, right Is now. Is that your first All-Star situation? All-Stars never come to Toronto, ever. Wow, okay. So, this is like a lot of stuff has never come to Toronto. Okay. It's just starting now. So like for us, okay. it's like because y'all blowing it up, baby. Yeah, we try. Yeah, you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah man. Nah, so hopefully, uh, that's that's like a, a a dope dope event. Um, for me, I I'm just excited. That's what's up. Now you strike yeah. me as a guy who plays Enjoy play it. Yeah. I'm, I'm all right. You know what I am? What? I'm the guy who gets on the court and just talks like I'm so nice. <laughs> That I can get in your head and believe, and you might just believe that you know, like I'm really that nice, and I might actually win the game off of that. So what happens when they pass you the ball, though? Nah, I'm not like garbage. You know what I'm saying? I still got the little uh. You know what I'm saying? You know how everybody feel like they got the uh. You know what I'm saying? But I, I don't know. For me, like I can play a little ball. Yeah, I got an ugly shot, but it goes in. I have the same thing. <laughs> It'd be like one-handed, and everybody writes it off like it ain't going in, and it goes in. Like, it's ugly. They don't even they don't even bother blocking me. Like, he's not going to make that. But yeah. I, it goes in. I mean, I, I've, I've, I'm like the shortest person, so like I always had to throw it up. Like, in the <laughs> like weirdest way. Hands? Like, yeah, yeah, the both hand joint, like, from the side. Far, yo, you just... know? But it used oh. to go in, so. Well, cool, man. Tory Lanez is in the building, man. We gonna blast through this lightning round, sure. man. I know you got a million important things to do. Tory yeah, Lanez, gonna... what are your vices? What's a vice? You know, something that, like, you know, I gotta do this every day. I'm addicted to this. I can't stop eating pizza. Like, what's your thing? Um, I definitely pray a lot. Uh, I can't stop eating fast food. What's your guilty fast food I, pleasure? Uh, Wendy's, or or I would have to say like wings and fries. I just can't stop eating wings and fries. It's good. You can <laughs> smash those on the go. Stop. I, who's the last girl that broke your heart? <laughs> last girl that broke my heart. I'd rather not say it on this show. It was just, I was I just realized when everyone was like, this is about to cause a problem. Now. <laughs> oh, it, was, it must have been kind of recent then. Yeah, it was kind of recent. Oh man, Aww. did you write the song about it? Um. I think I write songs about everything. Yeah, that, that song on. was old, remember? You should so keep his it vague because you might just money. Who was the first song that pulled you into music that made you decide, yo, this is what I want to do? Um, I think it was a song uh, by Jay-Z called Soon You'll Understand. And uh, the way he told the stories on the song... Um, it was weird because it was in the... I heard the song the la- like the last year when my mom... Uh, when my mom died. My mom died when I was 11. Sorry to hear that. That's mm. all good. Um, when she died, that was the only song I really listened to. And I remember him telling the stories and that, feeling like you know, I kind of want to be able to express how I feel like that and talking stories and say things like that. Uh, I think that was one of the songs. I always wish that was like people's introduction to Jay-Z because people always know him for The Flash. <laughs> but the but the way he nah, like you know way he was talking to that girl like one of the most intricate a hustler a lawyer, lawyer with, with a PhD, PhD. yeah I swear. it's like you know what I'm saying like that, those like those are those are lyrics that I I think they just stuck with me and things that I uh, you know even take from him to, to this day you know. Word. Well, yo, Tori, I know like this is year one as far as like being on the big stage. Yeah. You got a lot of big things in front of you. Definitely can't wait to see uh, what you drop next. Thank you. Before you go. We ask this of every other guest that comes to the studio. Sure. It's three names. Smash, Mary, Taze. If your options were <laughs> Nicki Minaj, Rihanna, and Molly Cyrus, who are you smashing, who are you marrying, and who's getting tased? They're not going to die. They're just going to be incapacitated. <laughs> um, And it's who? Smash, Mary, Taze, Nicki Minaj, Rihanna, Molly Cyrus. I would... I'd probably, I'd probably tase Molly. I saw that um, coming. <laughs> I would I smash I'd probably smash Rihanna and I'd probably I'd probably marry Nikki. Well played, my man. Yeah. Well played. Ladies and gentlemen, the voice <laughs> It's Tory Lanes. If people want to follow you, where they go, Chief? Uh you can follow me on uh Instagram and Twitter at the same handle as Tory Lanes, T O R Y L A N E Z. Cool, man. Yo, yeah. feed the streets, man. We need some we'll more. Do. Immediately. We'll do. Like, I yeah, got, yeah. I got, I got it. We need records. It's <laughs> on the way. It's <laughs> on the way. <laughs>